Ukti fafiro ia lo ia tuai. Lepa ia mau lungo le asu. Lau sungo le tai tai o sau ninga. Reven mau nga motu. Le la unga na ami. La fionga le au malu o malu o sa mo. La fionga tu ia tua tu pua tam se se efi. Malu ma si ofu. La fionga min sta o kapineta. So your malo my fafu. Le ali tu stala ya Tony Brandt. Ae mai se lim. Wa iam. Wa walunga. Wa sa sao nei. A fio maia. Ma tala maia ao. Ae o tal tson. Ono lo filungia le tato maftaka. O le afau au. O le afau au. Le tato po kalami. Il nganga. Il nganga peritania. Reverend Maunga Motu, Your Highness, the Head of State of Samoa, Afiyonga Tuya Tua Tupua Tam Tese Efi, and Masiofo Filia, Honorable Ministers of Cabinet, Members of the, of the Diplomatic Corps, Mr. Tony Brandt, author of the book we are launching today, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the Chairman and members of the Samoa Historical and Cultural Trust, I extend a warm talofa and welcome to you all. And at this time, I would like to call upon Reverend Maunga Motu, Secretary of the National Council of Churches, to lead us in a word of prayer. Talofa <laughs> Aurea ya mata ina ta tu ta po inga o le lua te usa mata ruai na o te talaina e foi si ta si o tu si i longa i tonu la tonu e ta ua o le Chinese in Samoa fi o tu le fionga ya kai i a ma sota ya tu mo le fa mo e mo e Aru nei whia whia whi, o utoe whia whia whoi, o utoe te talaina whoi ma whai si tāru sanga, e whā manui aere tusi, o sa au nia le whiongo ea Tony Brunt, Germans in Samoa. O au e ea u cousins and nieces, e saina, pito saina, a ea e whoi au cousins ma nieces, e re pito si a man, Sa ole ma fofo wina ye ni tanga ta fa pe nei lo ai nga ai o norto tele o ni se tutupu mai yo mato tutupu anga lo ya tunu ifaf that is why there are so many chinese and german connections of myself ta to ta po ai le tu o le tu o le fa ta wa tu spa yo la so nei fa o tu ina fa pe nei Fama nino ina ole nunumi. Fama nino ina ole nunumi. In English, sorting out the mess. O te tono fea unga le lei, ma le fama e moe ole fea fira nei. I think that this could be a very good aim for our coming to get today, this evening, to launch this book. To me, this book might be a helper to sort out the mess historically and culturally. O te ta tonu o se tusi o le a o ngā, a o mai e le ngā ngā pa ia o le a tūrana me alofa, i le te mai a Tony Brunt, God has gifted the offer spiritually to do this uh, hard work and very big job, preparing, initiating, thinking, writing, and so many actions done to this book. Now, today, our head of state and uh, many guests from many branches and from many parts of the world, especially in Samoa, 
we are coming here as a family to give this job or this book to be blessed by God. In the Marmalama, my father in Ophie, my father Marmalama, I live in Nato to Puranga for Yao Samo, Yao Samo for the Nevaito, Yale Afaito winner in Natus, Tatu Talo Ilangango le tour, Yafeso Swani for the Natus, Itala Anga Sio Tatu Watunu, I must say over the Vianga for his young money, where long to meet a meter or two tau, or see our money, but German. I have some many friends from Fanailili here, from the village of Mraimanu, who are connected to the offer. And I'm proud uh, to meet them because they are connected to this German family. And thank God for them. Yo tato matua, matua le tunu, ya e mai se o wo mai masan. Ola tato tano. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offer of this book. Thank you for his thoughts and the help from his wife and children and those who helped him out financially socially, culturally, and every part of contributions he received. We are here as a family, Samoan and Germans, and many friends who are coming with us today to bless and make this book a gifted book to our young generations and us today. We ask for your blessings upon the orphan and wife and the family. We ask for your blessing upon this book so that it will be a valuable spiritual helper to our people. Fatasi. historical and cultural trust is Tony Prant, but for the tour. If I pay enough for initial mafo fow, in the hard wing of a penny, in a fear, so son is your matter what to know. Ya no for near matter no new in a po, a matter of more man or low, who fit here in matter of my lower offer. Or a matter to tie no yet to not to the lover swap for his hooker resource, any more matter of fowl. To my matter room, one of them knew your oil toward the man, and I don't want to Nay, if I have a vow, if I have a vow, Amen. Ich heiße Johannes Jörg Mikhail und ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch und ich spreche etwas Deutsch. Aber ich hoffe, Sie hatten einen guten Aufenthalt heute Abend. Vielen Dank. Lange Brownman always tells me off for not speaking enough German. Uh, Your Highness, the head of the state, Reverend Maungamotu, cabinet ministers, high commissioners and members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege and a pleasure for me to stand before you this evening to welcome you for this very historic night where we are launching Tony Brunt's book, Germans in Samoa. As Reverend Monga mentioned two years ago, we'll 
we printed the Chinese in Samoa. Last year we reprinted the Cyclopedia of Samoa, and tonight we are launching Tony Brandt's book, Germans in Samoa. I'd like to introduce to you our Samoa Historical Trust. Uh, we are, we, Clarence Nelson, Toha Momoe von Raiki, Jeff Mafleet, myself, and Iono Sio Sia Maliatoa. It's, it's something that we support and love, and especially historical books concerning our country. When Tony introduced me to his book and said it's available online, I told him I have trouble reading things uh, on the computer and on the internet. Most of the emails I send end up in Jupiter or Mars, and some of the emails I sent to me, I have yet to receive them. Uh, so I'm here to welcome you, but at this time I'd like to, to turn the time back to the MC this evening, to Pai Klaus Tinsner, and uh, he will introduce our next two speakers. Thank you very much. Neil and Dunk, thank you. speaker for tonight, I think is a leader who needs uh, no introduction, but I also believe is a leader who has a, I think, a very strong understanding, appreciation, and passion for history and culture. History and culture, two aspects that are embraced in the book that is being launched tonight. So I'd now like to invite our keynote speaker, Lofionga, Lofionga, to support for your Historical Cultural Trust. Tony Brandt, what yeah, Words, reflection on Tony Brunt's To Walk Under Palm Tree Germans in Samoa, snapshots from albums. Let me start by thanking the organizers for the honor of saying a few opening words on the celebratory occasion. I am partial to invitations presented by those dear to me, and especially when they present them in person, so that when Joe Carl came to do F, what looked like a thick book, and an invitation to speak, I smiled. I knew that unless I was double booked, I would be here today. After reading the book, I'm glad that I am. The common saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, seems particularly apt for this book. The book is just over 250 pages, and most of those pages are filled with pictures from family photo albums, many of which have been lovingly restored by Tony and his helpers using modern digital technologies. Ebooks like this make sense in today's publishing world, but particularly for someone given the way in which we have taken to the internet. Ebooks capitalize on our modern penchant for instantaneous communication and is by far the more cost and time effective option in terms of bookmaking and reaching a larger and wider audience more quickly. 
Having dabbled a bit in the world of bookmaking, I fully appreciate the work involved in getting something like this together. It is no small task. Over the next few minutes, I would like to offer some thoughts about the potential impact of this ebook on some more ideas of history, especially history making, family, and legacy. My great aunt Gustava Nelson married Clem Metzel. Her sons Albert and Robert Wessel are memorialized along with many other German Samoans in this first book. I lived with my grandfather, Taishi Ola Frederick Nelson, into F as a child, and I remember visiting my aunt Gustava, his sister, often. She and her family lived in Lotopa at that time. She also wasn't far away. She had a horse and cart, which I loved. She also loved people and entertaining. She moved with ease and aplomb, it seemed to me, between her two very different worlds, that of her Samoan Safuna side and that of her European Swedish German families. As a shy child, I would cringe whenever my great aunt visited to Efu because I knew that no matter how many people were in the room, she would always make a big thing of hugging and kissing me. But I always forgave her because once she was finished, she gave me a shilling. <laughs> I uh, also remember the dinner parties my great aunt used to have and how I used to marvel at the large brick ovens they used to cook with. Everything was done with scientific precision from the way they cooked, the German sausages who prepared the geese for special occasions, to the way they brewed their beer. Many of the pictures in the book capture the high society culture of my great aunt and her German family. These uh, photographs allow her descendants more than a mere peek at how or where they lived or what they probably looked like back then, their fashions and tastes. Her children and great uh, children, etc also get a lesson on the physical and cultural landscapes of Samoa, especially urban appear at that time. These pictures are family heirlooms. They are tell of family culture and family history, but they are also national heirlooms because they also tell of a time in Samoan history. When reading these pictures as national historical record today, we must be careful to remember to read them within their historical context. In reading this book, I thought of my great aunt Gustava. It's the kind of book that she would have loved. I thought of her children and her children's children and how they would treasure this as a family heirloom because it speaks of a history and culture that belongs to them and to many others like them throughout Samoa. It is a history and culture that lives in their blood, flesh, and bones, and one that they can be proud of. Without a doubt, the German colonial period imposed significant changes on Samoan society and culture. 19th and early 20th century Samoa was besieged with foreign interests, a lot of which are captured by the photographs in this book. Western historians have lauded the German period in Samoa as the most settled period during European imperial colonial history. Much of this has been attributed to the skill and paternalism of Governor Sof. The Germans that came to Samoa were highly talented and well educated. The book makes this point loud and clear. German written and photographic records offer historical evidence of and what happened during their time, what they built and of what they were interested in in Samoa. The legacies of what they did, especially of what Governor Sof and his successor, Dr. Eric Schultz, Ewaf, who was also Chief Justice during his time, and of what Dr. Augustin Kramer did, lives on today. The significance of their contribution to understanding modern Samoa cannot be understated. Dr. Augustin Kramer's work on Samoan genealogies and custom is, for example, highly sought after by lands and titles called litigants today. 
History making in both deliberate is both deliberate and accidental. But making history books, such as the one we are launching today, has to be more deliberate than accidental. Once the decision is made to make a book such as this, a book that speaks directly to a country or to a people's past, deliberate thought has to be go, has to go into making decisions about what to put in and how to frame it and what audience to target and so on and so forth. The e-book is, as Tony said in his preface, a romantic remembrance of the history of Germans in Samoa. And as you go through the pages, you will realize that it is deliberately so. In saying this, I do not mean to say that it has no real or authentic contribution to our remembering of Samoa's history. It is very much a part of Samoa's history. Germany Samoa, Germany Samoa is as much a part of Samoan modern history as is Britain's or New Zealand's Samoa, American Samoa, and pre-imperial colonial and post-independent Samoa. In fact, as noted in this book, the history of Germans, Germany Samoa is not only part of the history of Samoa and Germany, it is also part of the history of New Zealand, Britain, and America, and is part, part of the age of global imperialism. Therefore, apart from some digital sprucing up of images there were, that were fading, the pictures of German Samoa recorded in this book are very real, many of which have not been publicly displayed before. The picture album therefore offers a record of German Samoa that is ripe for further historical and sociological analyses. <laughs> by, by saying that this is a book of romantic remembrance, I mean to say that it is a book that is unapologetic about the romantic origins and impetus. And so it would be. It is a book that came together through the love and nostalgia of German Samoan families for their families, many of which were born and raised in Samoa, as well as a love and nostalgia for Samoa. For some such as the Stinsner family, now living outside of Samoa, it was a nostalgia most prominently tied to what they remembered of their life, walking under the palms of their houses and plantations in, in Samoa. It is this love and nostalgia for family and some more that enabled this book to become a reality and has brought us here to bear witness to the launching of a voyage into the lives of the reading public, both here and beyond. By allowing these pictures to take center stage in the telling of the story of this book, the impact will be, as the saying goes, worth a thousand words. It is a great legacy and will contribute to the task of representing Samoa in all her fullness and color. I commend Tony and his team on completing this first book, and I look forward, God willing, as Tony said, to the launch of the second. God bless. So Reflections um, on the book, and I have to agree that there are a it's a book of, made up of many pictures, and for those of us, including myself, who grew up love, uh, loving to read comics, and we read books by looking at the pictures, um, this book is a joy to read. Our next uh, speaker is the man of the moment, Mr. Tony Brunt, and I'd like to invite Tony up uh, for, his, for your remarks and also to enlighten us on a journey that you took, which has led um, to the book launch this evening. So. Lawa fionga tuya tua, le ama malu o le malo, male masiofo. Lau susonga, Reverend Motu, members of the Samoa Historical and Cultural Trust spread around the room, and distinguished guests. I'm not going to say ladies and gentlemen tonight because tonight you are all our distinguished guests and we embrace you and thank you for coming along. Um, I was thinking I was, as I was sitting up here that the last time 
I came to an official function at Vailima. Uh, it was in 1975, all the way back in 1975, and it was an Independence Day ball or dance. Um, and little did I realise that 42 years later, uh, my next official function here uh, would be the launch uh, of a book with which I am associated. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, thank the Head of State for his erudite and uh, reflective comments uh, and accurate comments about the book. Um, and uh, I appreciate the time you took, um, Loa Fionga, in, in reading the book um, and your kind comments about it. Now, the book and the online photo exhibition uh, that it's based on certainly has taken a lot of time, um, but it would not have been possible without the extraordinary generosity uh, of a, a lot of long-suffering families who I bothered to open their photo collections, their priceless uh, family heirlooms to me. And I propose to pay tribute to uh, these kind-hearted and courageous people uh, shortly. But I do want to say that this is a wonderful venue, isn't it, for the launch of a history book. Um, and I want to thank Joe Kyle and the Trust for their inspired choice. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Museum Trust for agreeing to uh, have the, the launch here. Um, and in the whole of the broad tropical Pacific, I doubt that there is a more historic house than this. Um, it positively drips with memories and stories. And uh, just to pluck one or two items of interest out of the book about Vailima uh, from a German perspective, I think we can owe uh, a tremendous debt to the wealthy German trader and philanthropist uh, Gustav Kunst, uh, who really, uh, I think, allowed the house to survive. Uh, he bought it from the estate of Robert Louis Stevenson in 1901, uh, and it was badly run down. And um, before he died in Hamburg in 1905, he spent a lot of money refurbishing Vailima and its grounds. And on page 206 of the book, um, uh, uh, there's an invitation card from the next great master of this house, uh, Wilhelm Solf, uh, the German governor, and his wife, uh, his new wife, Joanna, in, in mid-1909. And uh, they were inviting a select group of people from Apia uh, to come up for musical evenings uh, on the last Saturday of every month. So uh, the sound of violins, a piano, and maybe a cello, and singing uh, probably echoed around the, uh, the grounds of Vailima um, until the next German governor, who was a, a bachelor and a much more private man, uh, Eric Schultz. Um, and that's when I think the social life up here came to an end in that area. So um, Schultz, by the way, as, as, I, as I've told before, uh, fell in love with Samoa, and he had a, was tattooed with a full pepper. Um, it, can you imagine one of the following New Zealand administrators being tattooed with a full pepper? <laughs> um, it may have happened up here. The two funga ta ta tau may have done it up here. We don't know. He was so secretive about these things. So tonight, with this gathering, we um, add in a very small way to the uh, long curriculum vitae of this grand house. And I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for coming along tonight and helping make it uh, the special occasion that it is, especially those who've traveled from overseas and have traveled long distances. Um, we, we do have quite a few guests tonight from, uh, from New Zealand. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming and I, I propose to focus in on a few of you uh, later on. Um, as I said, I, I do want to spend a bit of time tonight uh, thanking a number of people uh, and in the process, giving a little bit of background on how the project came about. Uh, I'll be talking for about 40 minutes, uh, so there is no early escape, I'm afraid. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to highlight uh, something that underlies the way that I work, and certainly the way that I worked on this book. And that is um, because I think it's important, and that is the, the feeling of deep respect and a strong affection, ole alofa, that I have uh, for the people I've been researching and for the people I present in the book. I couldn't, I couldn't have persisted with such a long project uh, if it had just been a piece of cold historical uh, investigation. 
Uh, but when you're working with photographs, especially personal photographs uh, that people have shared, um, you're brought right into the lives of the people displayed. You're spending hours and hours sometimes uh, digitally restoring uh, these photographs um, and optimizing them for display. You're looking at the people and they're looking at you. And it's quite different uh, from researching historical documents. There's almost a spiritual dimension to it, uh, certainly a very human dimension. These people have passed on, but I still regard them as being present, uh, not physically, uh, but present nevertheless. And so I'm careful to treat their lives and their life stories with discretion, fairness, uh, sensitivity, because the forum uh, they're being shown on is worldwide, the internet, and they had no expectation uh, when they were on this side of the veil uh, that their lives would be the subject of this unique type of re-examination to a global digital audience. Um, new revolutionary forms of communication require uh, the personal or family historian to exercise new levels of self-restraint. There are, of course, many things I've been told by the families uh, in my journey uh, about the people that are portrayed that, of course, I would never include uh, in a caption or online. And there are photos that I have scanned from family collections that are of major historical interest from some angles. But because of the nature of the content, uh, I won't use them. There are also some photos that when I have tried to upload them to the online photo exhibition, will not upload. Or my internet connection drops out persistently. Uh, so I've taken that as a message and withdrawn them and rearranged that part of the exhibition. Uh, there's lots more on this subject that I could talk about, uh, but now is not the time. So in this way, I find I can work in a strange sort of collaboration for the satisfaction of everyone involved. And I mean those involved in a broad sense. It's been a balancing act. Uh, on one side is the, uh, are the demands of history, uh, of trying to portray the, um, the truth of the times in captions and in photographs. And on the other side is the need to be fair, uh, the need to preserve the dignity of people. Uh, and to some extent, their privacy as well. So that's how I work. Uh, and that's perhaps the reason why I've been able to form genuine friendships with the people who have opened uh, their family collections to me. Uh, meeting these people and listening to their always remarkable stories um, has been an incredibly rewarding experience and a life highlight. So that brings me to a number of um, thank yous I want to make uh, to people who are here tonight. And this is in no order of importance, it's a bit random. Firstly, the Sase Heaney family. This project began as a result of me writing the Brunt family history many years ago. And uh, several years ago, I decided to uh, call on a cousin um, in, in Auckland who I never met before, uh, Agnes Sase, uh, who married, and uh, her married name was Heaney. Um, and I went there mainly to look at boring old Brunt stuff, but uh, I came away enthralled with the wonderful photography she had of her father, who worked for the DH and PG. Uh, he came here in the early 1900s, married Louisa Halliso, had a family. And um, so I asked Agnes uh, if I could um, scan those photos, and she said uh, she gave me a lot of great information, and she let me scan the photos. Um, including the fantastic dancing in the forest photo, uh, which we have framed in our home, and is probably this wide and about this high, um, and I regard as one of the 10 uh, best photos to come out of Samoa uh, in the German uh, colonial period. So with Agnes's kind agreement, we scanned them, uh, and that was the first step. Uh, that experience alerted me to the fact that there were probably other family albums that people hadn't seen uh, that had photography of real historical significance. And that's how it turned out. Uh, now, Agnes is in her 90s. She is not well enough to travel, uh, but there are members of her family who have come up tonight, especially for this 
uh, this book launch, and I will mention them in a minute. But before I do, a last word on Agnes uh, and her mother, Louisa Halliso, because her mother is immortalised in a famous Samoan pesi, uh, Ole Fana Ta'avili or Ote Ote Mai. There's a line in the song that goes, Malea Fafini o Khaleesi. Now that daughter of Khaleesi, of Chris, of Christian Halliso, was Agnes's mother, uh, who was a witness to the tragic events of Black Saturday at the Halliso Sase shop um, opposite the courthouse. And Agnes was also a witness as a young child. Uh, so Louisa Halliso um, was the grandmother to a number of members of the Sase Heaney family who have flown up from New Zealand to be here tonight. Uh, Anne Gordon, uh, Kevin and Mark Heaney, grandson Michael, and partners Tina and Sarah. And as my tribute to Agnes, I wonder if they could stand up uh, and be recognised, please. Secondly, the Sternsner family, uh, you know, who have a chapter in the book, and, and it's right at the heart of the book. And it was their grandfather who, uh, as the head of state referred, uh, gave us the title of the book, To Walk Under Palm Trees, which he wrote in a wistful letter from Germany in the 1940s. Uh, and what he actually wrote was, uh, I long sometimes to walk under palm trees. Now, early on in this project, um, people told me in Auckland, look, you've got to talk to Albie Sternsner. He's the Sternsner family historian. Uh, I hadn't met Albie, so I, I, I rang him out of the blue um, and I said I wanted to come around and talk to him and have a look at his photos. Um, he said, come around, uh, uh, and we met a couple of weeks later. I met him and his lovely wife, Rhonda, um, and Albie showed me some beautiful photos. Um, and I was, but I was absolutely enthralled by the Sternsner family story, which, to use a bit of a cliché, uh, is a, um, it's an epic family saga of the turbulent 20th century. You know, it's just, it's got everything. And uh, I resolved that night um, that we would not just make the photo exhibition a random series of photos with captions, but we would group it into chapters. And one of the chapters that I wanted to, to write was the chapter about the Sternsner saga. Um, uh, just in brief, you will know, most of you, that Fritz Sternsner was an architect and builder who came in here in, in 1897. Um, he started a building company. He built the courthouse, the, uh, the building that later became known as the Casino Hotel. Uh, he built the uh, German, uh, the observatory at Mulinu'u and a number of other uh, iconic um, homes and uh, commercial buildings. Um, then uh, he married um, Mary, Mary Beetham. Uh, they had a family. The First World War comes along. The family is stripped of all their assets, like just about all of the other uh, Germans in, in Samoa. Um, and uh, they were sent to internment in New Zealand. And um, uh, Fritz Sternsner's uh, young children, or half of them, were allowed to live with them uh, in, uh, on Motuhi Island because he was ill. Um, then they went back to Germany. They were sent back to Germany in the 20s, or sorry, 1919. Uh, in the mid-1920s, they came back. They were one of only two German families who were allowed to come back uh, to Samoa. The other family was the Dusterdijk family. Uh, the Sternsners took over the management of the Tuval plantation. Um, two of the boys went out on their own later. And then in 1939, uh, Fritz uh, and Mary returned uh, to Germany. Um, and um, uh, two of the boys who were living in Samoa were put into internment for six years six years away from their family. So that's where, roughly where the Sternsner chapter uh, finishes off. Um, but during my, my, my project, Albie became a good friend uh, and my right-hand man uh, on the photo archiving project. You know, he's a real Samoan. He was born and raised here. I'm just a plastic Samoan. Um, so Albie was able to point me uh, in the direction of other German Samoan families and, and who might have good uh, uh, photo collections. And he drew into our circle of helpers his fantastic uh, uh, siblings. Klaus, um, Horst, Oscar, and Court, his sister Trudy, uh, and his cousin Marina. Um, and on the ground here in Apia, doing a lot of the hard work, his niece, Tertia Ryan. Uh, I was a very, very lucky man uh, to have this superbly uh, knowledgeable team that I could run questions past and get information from. And more of that will appear in volume two. Um, Albie has 
flown up to be with us tonight. I don't see him in the audience, but if he is here, Elby, could you please stand up? Thank you. Thank you, Elby. Now, thirdly, the Hufnagel family. Most of the family photo collections I have had to hunt down. Um, but one extraordinary set of albums came to me um, uh, and, uh, out of the blue. I got a call one day from a woman called Christine Hood, and she said, uh, Tony, my, my auntie is, uh, is Tuzel, and she is the granddaughter of Captain Court Hufnagel, uh, who was the manager of the Vaileli Plantation for 30 years, from 1881 uh, to 1911. Um, he married Catherine Beetham, um, and I knew that Captain Hufnagel was a major figure in the Samoan agriculture uh, for a long, long time. Almost from the time he came in off the sea and started a management of the Vailele Plantation, it became a centre of innovation in agriculture in Samoa. Um, and and it, was a, it was a model plantation which was on the tourist route back in the sailing ship days. Uh, Christine said, look, Tuzel uh, is not sure what she wants to do with this collection. Uh, would you like to come around and have a look at it? You know, that's like asking an alcoholic if he wants another drink. Uh, I went around and met uh, Tuzel and her husband, Laurie, and was astonished at the quantity and quality of the photographs they had, uh, some going back to the 1870s, and all of them beautifully preserved. Tuzel was born and raised in Samoa, uh, at a plantation at Lotopa called Sungafo that the captain had run on the side for his own family. Uh, and as a child, uh, she even sat on the knee of Count Felix von Luckner when he visited Samoa. Her brother, Jim, travelled on von Luckner's yacht, the Seiteufel, uh, as a cabin boy. Her father was Court Hufnagel Jr., or as he later became known, Court Hufnagel Beetham. Uh, he was chief surveyor in Samoa uh, in the 1920s and 1930s. So Tuzel and I became good friends, and need needless to say, she and Laurie had to put up with me camped at their dining table for long periods with my scanner going through their albums. Now, a couple of months ago, um, Laurie sadly passed on after a long illness, and I sent a note of condolence to Tuzel, uh, and I said um, in that that it would be great for her to come up to this opening, to this launch, uh, as a pick-me-up. Uh, and also because this could be the last time uh, that the Hufnagel name is ever mentioned in Samoa at a state-attended function. And I'm pleased to say uh, that um, Tuzel uh, has been compliant. Uh, she and her daughter Kathy uh, flew up uh, from Auckland last night, and um, I'd like Kathy and, uh, and, and Tuzel to stand up and turn around so that people can see them, please. And the centerpiece for me uh, of Tuzel's collection, which I have featured in the book, was something that I regard as one of the most sensational pieces of historical memorabilia uh, to come out of the German Samoan period. And it was Captain Hofnagel's farewell card uh, when he retired from Vailele in 1911. Uh, there were 126 signatures, uh, mainly by uh, European settlers, uh, Germans, uh, English people, and others, uh, and I said to Duzel, can you bring the card up with you? Uh, and she said, what, that big thing? Uh, and I said, yes, that big thing, but only bring it if, if you can bring it up in your luggage without it being damaged. And uh, again, she has kindly complied. And I just wonder, I'd like to show it uh, to the people here, uh, Kathy. and I wonder, Kathy, if you could bring the card up and um, we could, we could show, show the audience Captain Hofnagel's card. Maybe if you could come around and stand with me here, Kathy. Now, this is a wonderfully, beautifully, beautiful leather cover. It was given to Captain Hofnagel. Lovely embossed relief pattern around the edges. And um, on the inside, an illuminated uh, inscription in, in, uh, in German. 
and then on, on the other side, uh, all of these beautifully preserved uh, signatures, and starting off with the German governor, Dr. Eric Schultz at the top. And look, there will be people here tonight whose grandfathers or great-grandfathers have got their signatures on this card. Uh, and if you're well behaved, um, Giselle might give you a look at this uh, later on tonight. Do people want to know what the German inscription says in English? Is there anyone who wants to know that? Yes? Okay. Look, Kathy is a teacher of German in the secondary school system in Auckland, and uh, she has kindly done a translation for it, which she is now going to read out. So if you could read that out, Kathy, that would be wonderful. Right. <clears throat> to Captain Court Hufnagel, we, the undersigned settlers of the Protectorate of Samoa, Take the opportunity of the occasion of your retiring from your official profession to give voice to the feeling of admiration and respect that you have earned throughout your life in our community. You have travelled on your path calmly and serenely, a great man constantly led by the thought of serving the human interests of the community. In the 35 years that you lived and worked in Samoa, the pressing duties called you to act as a true son of the German nation and as an active citizen of our colony. Your service to the fatherland is rewarded by the favour of the Kaiser and the story of our island will be made known in the future. Your sense of public spirit has been revealed in the way you have sought and found many opportunities to help and promote the good of the individual and the community as a whole. This card we have signed is evidence of our gratitude and we wish you a long life full of peace and joy. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. Fourthly, the Spayman family. Four members of the Spayman family uh, flew up from Auckland for this book launch but owing to circumstances, had to return to Auckland this morning. But I do want to acknowledge them here. A couple of years ago, I tracked down the patriarch of the, of the, of the Spayman family, uh, Rudy Spayman, to a seaside village, an hour's drive from Auckland. See, there's no escape from me. <laughs> and I met with him and his lovely wife, Moira. And Rudy gave approval for me to access the large family photo collection, which is kept in storage uh, in a basement in West Auckland. It is exceptional and again features photos dating back to the 1870s and 1880s uh, from the first professional photographer in Samoa, John Davis. The Spayman collection gathers together a number of photos uh, from other old German families in Samoa who are in the Spayman family tree. Axman, uh, Gaybauer, uh, as well as Maliatoa. The family appear to have most of the collection of the late Hugo Gebauer, who lived in Samoa for 50 years uh, from 1884 to 1933, and who was one of the giants of the German community. Fifthly, it's time I acknowledged uh, my dear wife, Fionai. Now look, she is a proud Falealili girl, and I have dedicated this book to her. Uh, let me read out from the acknowledgement section of the book where I thank her for her patience uh, and support in the extended endeavour which this project became. It has taken up a few years of my, my spare time, several actually, and she has seen it through with a level of good cheer and tolerance that have created a congenial workspace and helped lessen the guilt, uh, my guilt about the endless hours spent. I might add that we have a mutual convenience pact because Fee is a preschool teacher. She has a tremendous out-of-office workload, uh, writing reports, um, paperwork, doing preparation. So she sits on the other side of the dining table with her laptop and her pile of papers, and I sit on the other side of the table with my laptop and my papers, and we're together. <laughs> I might not be there mentally, uh, but I'm there physically. And you married people here tonight will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I wonder if, if Fee and my two daughters, uh, Louisa and Rowena, could stand up, please. Thank you. 
Okay, we're coming down the home straight. Uh, there are some people here tonight from Samoa who I want to briefly acknowledge before I sit down. Joe Kyle has moved heaven and earth to have this book published in hard copy. In marketing terms, Joe is what they call a product champion. He has really got behind this book, and I've been flattered by his commitment to it. Though this book is freely available on the internet uh, as an e-book or a PDF, and has been downloaded by about 9,000 people, Joe rightly believes, I think, that uh, there is a strong demand for a book. People want to hold something in their hands and maybe have it as a bit of a family heirloom. Um, so he and the Trust have pushed the boat out financially in order to achieve that objective. And what a magnificent job Joe and the Trust have done. The quality of this book, uh, which was printed in America, is fantastic. Uh, Joe is tireless. He is enthusiastic, uh, and he is also something else. I was talking to his wife, Celine, and, uh, many months ago, and I, I expressed some doubt about maybe um, the project going to completion. And she said, Tony, uh, you have to realize one thing. Joe is a very persistent man. So thank you, Joe, for your persistence, um, for your vision, uh, for your generosity, um, and for your endless energy. Can you please stand up? <laughs> I want to acknowledge uh, Lumepa Apelu Held, Principal Officer of the Museum of Samoa until a few weeks ago, uh, who was a wonderful source of moral support over the last four or five years, and who came up with the idea that we should put these photos in a special website. Um, Lue uh, Lumepa has recently moved on uh, to, to take over the family business, uh, the Taufua Beach Fales at Lalomanu. So our years of enjoyable collaboration have sadly come to an end. Um, is Lumepa here tonight? No, she's not. There are people from two Samoa-based families here tonight uh, who have donated photos, most of which will appear in Volume 2. Lester Dean. Lester is here uh, with his wife, Leela. Uh, uh, his son, Charles. Uh, is, I'm not sure if Tua is here. Um, now, Lester Dean sounds like an English name, doesn't it? Uh, but Lester's mother was a permula. She was a daughter of the first German dairy farmer uh, in Samoa, Barnum Permula, uh, who had milking cows up at Ulululoa. Uh, I think Lester told me, I seem to recall Lester told me that when Mr. Permula was deported uh, from Samoa in 1920, along with um, uh, about 180 other Germans, um, he wanted to take Lester's mother back with him and her sisters, uh, but they didn't want to go. So if I get the story right, they hid in the forest for a couple of days uh, until the ship had gone. Um, good move. <laughs> Otherwise, Lester would not be here tonight. Lester has also not only shared a few photos from his collection, but he's also put me in touch with his relatives uh, in Germany, the Permulas, the Traub family, and the Putfaken family. Who were, or who were also in Samoa in the old days. And they have given me some marvellous photography uh, for future volumes uh, and to be deposited in, in the museum. In fact, one of um, Lester's relatives, uh, the, the, the Christelle Voigt and Gerhard Voigt, and Christelle is the granddaughter of the last German postmaster in Samoa, um, she and her husband have travelled over much of Germany on my behalf uh, I didn't um, request that they do it, but they've voluntarily done it, uh, scanning albums from some families. So, you know, I have a lot to thank Lester for. Um, Lester, could you please stand up? <laughs> the final donors who are here tonight and who I want to acknowledge are the Von Reiki family. As I recall, it was Reimer Von Reiki uh, who forwarded to me um, some wonderful photos of the German rubber plantation at Solaua, behind Salua Fata, uh, with which their German forebear, Fritz von Reiki, was associated. Uh, I, be I believe it was the largest rubber plantation in the Pacific, 
uh, with about a million rubber trees planted up to 1914. Uh, the photos, which I hope to use in the next volume, um, I believe were retrieved from von Reiki relatives uh, in Germany uh, relatively recently. Um, now, I know Reimer, I think, was going overseas. Is, Lua is Luana or Polowai here? If you could be acknowledged, please, and stand up if you can. That would be lovely. Thank you. Polowai. Thank you. Thank you, Luana and Polowai. Thank you. Thank you, Polo. I have two more brief acknowledgements of local people, and then I'll sit down. Uh, firstly, Lealai Tangamoa Eric Mattis, grandson of German settler Alfred Mattis. Eric took me on a couple of really fun expeditions into uh, the hills behind Mulifanua um, and behind Mangia, where we were looking for remnants of a couple of old German plantation houses. Um, and the big pineapple, the very big pineapple canning factory that the Germans built almost right under Mount Tolfua. Uh, almost no one ever got to see it because it was so far off the beaten track. But we managed to find some photos of it in a really obscure garage in Auckland. Um, but anyway, uh, Eric took me on these wonderful expeditions uh, and um, uh, with the help of local people, uh, and Eric's translation abilities, we found what we were looking for uh, in, the, in, in the bush. Uh, it was very exciting for me. I, I can't guarantee it was very exciting for Eric, though. <laughs> so, Eric, thank you very much for some very cool trips. Uh, where are you? Could you stand up, please? Uh, finally, I want to acknowledge my relatives uh, from Alipata, Sale Imoa and Apia, and Fionai's sisters from Falialili and Vaiteli for their kind hospitality during my research trips to the islands. Well, that's it from me. Um, let me conclude by thanking the Head of State, Male Masiofo, uh, for being so kind as to honour us uh, with their presence tonight. And thank you all for your kindness in attending as well. Fafitai lava a fifio masusumai. Thank you. And how fitting it is, I think, that you can share that story and take us on that journey here at the home of Tusitala or the storyteller. So if you could give one out on that. Um, our next, um, I believe there's a special pr presentation, and I'd like to invite the chairman, um, the board, Hans Joachim Kyle, for that presentation. Thank you. This is the <clears throat> last part of our, <coughs> of our uh, evening. Again, I'd like to, to thank the uh, Robert Louis Stevenson Museum Trust for allowing us to, to have this uh, homeless uh, launch here this evening. We, are, we appreciate your generosity, and we'd also like to, to thank the, the Stinsner family for offering to supply us with light refreshments, as you can see in the, in the program. We appreciate that very much. It's uh, wonderful to have all of you here this evening, especially the ones who are visiting from overseas to make this a very memorable evening. The, we have some some special guests who'd like to honor. Now, the, the first one, he came two weeks ago and he left last week. He, he couldn't stay any longer, and that's uh, Leo Pepe Frederick Frost. Uh, Leo Pepe Frederick Frost is featured in the book. As, as far as we can see, he's the only person still alive that's inside this book of Tony Brunt's. And, uh, he sends his, his love and apologies. He was here, that, but he had to go back and head back to the United States. If you had watched TV last night and the night before, he, he was on television we, uh, uh, giving his, uh, his love and uh, uh, wishes for us for a successful evening. And that's uh, Leo Pepe Frederick Frost, who is the son of uh, uh, Fatu, Leopold Fatu Frost, that's featured in the book. 
Our other <coughs> uh, presentation this evening it would be to His Highness the, the Head of State, Anna Masiofu. Uh, this is your, your book uh, from uh, Tony Brunt and from the Samo Historical Trust. Thank you. Of course, uh, this is uh, the next book is to our Reverend for the evening, uh, Reverend Maunga Mupo uh, Motu. Reverend uh, Ole Matoele, so Teutusi, Ale Tusi. So Ole Tusi, Leo Tusi, Talwaiole, Fanonga, a sign of Leon, no, my Isamo, Yale Tusi, Leo Fanonga, Siamani, Leon, no, my Tufata Simolo Tuspa, Yale Fanonga, Israel, of Tai Lava. Tai. As uh, Tony mentioned, we are so privileged to have Tuzal Emmons here. I had the privilege of traveling to New Zealand about a year ago and, and met her, and uh, they showed me that wonderful card that was pre presented to her grandfather, uh, Captain Court Hufnagel. And you can see with the signatures in there that uh, it had most of the uh, planters and, the, and members of the German community, also some from the other uh, countries that were represented here in Samoa. And, uh, and looking through, I. I also recognize immediately the, uh, the signature of my, my grandfather, Hans Joachim Kyle, who came from, from Germany and who I am proudly named after. Thank you. And this is for you from Tony and uh, the uh, Samo Historical Trust. Thank you. Uh, the next one would be to the Agnes. Uh, Sasehini family, and uh, we have with us this evening to represent her mother, Miss uh, Anne Gordon, and also members of the family. So, Anne Gordon, can you please uh, uh, accept this on behalf of uh, uh, thank you of uh, Tony Brunt and the, the trust. Now, we, the other special guest who was supposed to be with us this evening, I, I don't see him, I hope he's here, was uh, Klaus Tins. Uh, Klaus uh, just turned 80 last month, and, uh, and their family has uh, contributed a lot to, to the making of this book and, and also for tonight's event. Elvi, who traveled from New Zealand, is here to accept the book on behalf of the Stinsner family. Ramon Mole, Elvi. And, and the last one, well, not the last one, but uh, on the list is a, is a special friend of our historical trust. He was also a special friend of the, the old courthouse trust, the Apia Courthouse. Uh, this uh, kind friend was so much assisted to Samoan. He loved the Samoan people. He came to Germany, uh, he married a Samoan, and fell in love with Samoa. And, he never to return. And uh, he was also uh, a very good friend of the head of state in the Masiofo. And I'd like to, uh, to ask uh, Malu uh, Ani Schreiber uh, to come and accept uh, the book on behalf of your husband, who passed away uh, in December. And so, uh, but he would have been here this evening. Malu, can you accept? And for those of you, uh, Anne Schreiber was the honorary German consul for Samoa for the last 15 years. And uh, I was proud to work with him on many occasions. And, and he loved Samoa. And today would have been Anne's 58th birthday. We, we miss having Anne here. Um, and because you're, you're all special guests, I'm sorry I can't give out any more books. Uh, <laughs> it costs the trust a lot of money, which we owe the bank. And uh, the sooner we you buy all the books and pay it off, Tony will go into volume two. Uh, <laughs> but just uh, out of the, the kindness of the hearts of our trust, this is for 
another special friend, and she was born in Samoa, moved to Germany, and came back to to live the rest of her life in Samoa, and also wrote a book. Uh, this is for Langi Brown. Come on, Molly. Langi, this is a special gift to you. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you so much. You know, a lot of us talk about the German times and how prosperous we, we were. And those of you who are in government can can listen to this because uh, Tony Brunt gave you a, a very good history and then I'm amazed at the wealth of information that he had has. And we look forward to the next book. But he was right that we had Samoa had five major exports. We had the copra, the cocoa, uh, the rubber, and the coffee, and the pineapple. The, those were the only five exports that we had in, uh, from Samoa during the German times. In 1914, uh, we, had, uh, we had the most exports that Samoa has ever had. Uh, Samoa has never reached the level of exports that we had in 1914. It just kept growing each year that we had in the German administration. And in every year, there was a surplus in the budget. Uh, they kept sending money to, to Germany, to Berlin. But uh, nowadays, I won't say anything about the budget because I think we, uh, <laughs> we owe some money. So, Honorable Minister, I think that's a, a, a good lesson to learn. Maybe we should bring some more Germans into your administration. <laughs> uh, but Faftai Taylor Lover for the opportunity. There are uh, the refreshments on this side and the book selling on the other side. The, I think the, because the, if you open the, the dust cover, this it's, it's all in gold. It's a first class book. The, the letters are written in gold. and. Uh, they're worth about a thousand tala, but we're giving it to you at the cheap price of 200 tala. <laughs> so, thank you very much, and I'd, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, invite uh, our Reverend uh, Motu to close this evening with a prayer. And again, thank you so much for, for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. Faftai Telela. Thank you. <laughs> In a my own fat my moil of fan out in a fief for Perry the Ingle Law Fio Tapero Mato of Fine, it feel a moo on a lay. Fat of no will not to Uma my mato in the low farm there and a lay since the Esther Law Fio, it will swap for your soul, Mato Fight Winner in Fat Moy. Amen. Mm -hmm.